I finally got round to watching You've Got Mail and I can honestly say I completely see why there's so much hype surrounding this film. There's no reason why I hadn't watched it other than I just never got round to it and then I realised it was only on Amazon Prime for another two days after today so I jumped at it and I'm glad I did because it's almost a blueprint on how to do a romance film and a rom-com successfully. The only thing I didn't like about it was the fact that there was a question of infidelity and I feel like that was unnecessary for one of the characters. It didn't really need to be in there. I think that element should have been removed but because they didn't really explore it in too much depth but it was there, it was underdeveloped, that concept, that idea just didn't need to be there at all. But aside from that, I thought it was beautifully done. This was released in 1998, directed by Nora Ephron. Um, the screenplay is by Delia Ephron and Nora Ephron. And obviously, this stars the brilliant Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan as Joe Fox and Kathleen Kelly. We also have Steve Zahn in this. <laughs> his character, um, I really enjoyed. I thought his character was brilliant and um, provides some... I don't want to say comic relief, but there are some scenes that could potentially be quite emotional for at least Kathleen and um, George, his character, comes along and actually make things, makes things a little bit more lighthearted. Really loved his character. But the story is mostly told through the perspective of Kathleen and Joe. They meet on an online website. I'm not sure, it's not a dating site, I'm not sure what this chat room is, but they meet on there. They don't know each other's like each other's identities. They don't really know anything about each other because they refuse to ask personal questions. They just have idle, friendly chit chat. But as an audience, we know, we know that, we know who they are. We know that when they do meet each other in real life for the first time, they don't know who the other person is, but we do. And Kathleen actually runs a bookstore that's been in her family for, I think, about 42 years, I think it is. And Joe is Joe Fox of Fox's Books. And they are opening a large bookstore right across the street that is definitely threatening Kathleen's little bookstore. And there's obviously this concept of, well, if they do eventually meet and realise who the other person is, are they going to continue this friendship that may well develop into a romantic relationship once they know that they are essentially rivals? Well, Kathleen sees him as a rival. Joe, obviously, as the giant corporate bookstore, doesn't necessarily see any threat in Kathleen. And he quite likes her as a person when they meet without knowing that they are the chat room people. Does this make sense? Am I making sense? It's not as confusing as I'm making it sound. Long story short, they do not know that the other person is the person they're talking to online. So in real life, there's a lot of animosity between them. Kathleen definitely does not like Joe. If she finds out that he is the chat room person, is she going to change her feelings about Joe as a person? This is what we are constantly nail biting to find out. Will they ever reveal the truth? I don't want to say what happens, but I will say that I was really pleased with what happened, particularly surrounding Joe's character. I think they took the right route with that. It allowed for a bit of imbalance with the level of control. And because I really liked Joe's character, that worked really well for me. I didn't actually like Kathleen at all. And there's no real reason for that. Because she has every right to be upset with Joe for opening this large chain bookstore and, you know, threatening her bookstore's business. And she has every right to respond the way she did. But because I liked Joe and he was a charmer, I just didn't like Kathleen. And I know that that's obnoxious, but I couldn't help it. So I was glad that Joe's character definitely seemed to be in the driving seat with a lot of this. And I really liked that. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, of course, were brilliant. Their on-screen chemistry was fantastic. I truly adored watching the contrasts between the more, you know, the, the animosity and the almost hatred, hate's a strong word, but the strong negative feelings Kathleen felt towards Joe contrasting with the way she talked to him 
online not knowing his true identity. I think it was really beautiful to watch and I can definitely believe the hype. As I said, the whole there's even one point where she asks her friend if it's classed as infidelity if you are just chatting in a chat room. And I did think, well, you you've raised this question because you want to draw attention to this fact, but it's not really a big issue for her. So they've kind of underplayed that part of the narrative to the extent where they should have just removed it. It seems like padding. The character doesn't really respond differently than she would have done had she been single. So that part of the narrative I feel was like unnecessary fluff that they were maybe trying to give it more substance or to give the character more depth or maybe to make her seem less perfect. You know, she is technically cheating on somebody because she is displaying these romantic feelings towards somebody when she's in a relationship with somebody else. But it's just unnecessary fluff that didn't actually add anything and didn't really add to the character's actions or what they chose to do. So it was unnecessary, but apart from that, I think it's well written. Aside from that, I think it's a good story. The characters are quite interesting. We don't get to know too much about their backgrounds or their personal lives, which I think is quite a fascinating approach because that's the same with their online personalities. They've fallen in love with the idea of a person. They've kind of fallen in love with the words that person uses, which for me as a writer is a really great thing because somebody could write me a love poem and I could fall in love with them because of how beautiful their words are and you know fantastic diction but in real life they could be really annoying and even if they use all the right words I could hate them but I love the fact that they fell in love with somebody purely based on the words they've chosen to use and I think that that's great so the film for me was really enjoyable Quite funny, not laugh out loud funny, but a really nice example of how to develop a romantic relationship while weaving in pitfalls and other problems. Not perfect, but definitely worth watching. It is leaving Amazon Prime imminently, but I'm sure it'll be back on at some point. But I think it's pretty easy to get hold of. It might also be on Netflix. If you can get hold of it, it's definitely worth watching. You've got mail. <laughs>